Hello and welcome to WTO Forum. The urgent need to develop sustainable energy policies is something that governments recognize around the world. Very often trade policies, be they tariffs, standards, local content or subsidies, can impact on these policies. In recognition of the intersection between trade and sustainable energy, WTO ministers in Doha agreed to include in the Doha round negotiations discussions on eliminating barriers to trade in environmental goods and services, many of which are energy-related products. So the question today is, what role for the WTO in the promotion and development of sustainable energy policies? Do existing WTO rules offer adequate support, or do new rules need to be developed? We're very fortunate to have with us today two experts on this matter. We have Laurence Tubiana, the director of the Institute for Sustainable Development and International, International Relations in Paris, and Ricardo Melendez Ortiz, chief executive for the International Center for Trade and Sustainable Development. Welcome to you both. Laurence, let's start with you. What can the WTO do to support sustainable energy policy? I think today we are a, a little in the same situation that we were in the 90s with agricultural policies, by the way. And uh, today energy policies are implemented everywhere with now a climate constraint, everybody trying to go to renewable energy, if possible, energy efficiency. So I think now um, WTO has to reconsider, like agriculture, some can be done through the agri actual agreements. I think about IPR agreements, the trips, or the subsidies. Intellectual property. Intellectual property rights. But uh, I may say that a, a number of these issues are disconnected. And uh, energy policy are not a, a sum of a small decision on subsidies and, uh, and standards and norms or, or for example, uh, or, or technology push or sub subsidizing research and development, it's much bigger. So we need something more integrated. And I think that's the best main failure of the discussion today. WTO can sort of begin the discussion, but we need something. I don't know if it's WTO now, because the Doha round is, is having really facing a, a, a tremendous deadlock, and we need a forum to discuss energy policies in, in a sort of a confident way for countries. It's very important for the climate change discussion, and for the moment we don't have that forum. Uh, so my view is that we have to open a space of dialogue. Uh, I don't know if it has to be outside WTO or inside, but really this fragmented d d discussion, even the panel and the conflict who are now uh, happening because of this uh, uh, very important discussion, I think it's really not the, w the good way to go. Ricardo, your thoughts? Well, the, we're living through a moment where we face um, uh, many challenges. Uh, some of them have to do with energy. Uh, so we live in a planet where uh, depending on how you count it, at least uh, a billion people lack access to modern forms of energy. Of the modern forms of energy, some 80% uh, or so comes from fossil fuel sources, uh, so oil, natural gas, coal. Um, and uh, we face uh, the question of climate change. Uh, you ask about sustainable energy. Defining sustainability requires what, that we look at issues related to decarbonization, so the transformation of these energy sources, of the energy supply, if you like, to uh, low carbon uh, sources. Uh, we have to look at issues related to land use, biodiversity, the competition with food, uh, particularly when it has to do with biofuels and the production of energy from crops. And then, uh, obviously, we have to think about issues related to health. Most of those people that don't have access to modern forms of energy get their energy from uh, wood from the forest uh, that has uh, very severe uh, health implications for their families. So that's, that's a, a big question. Now when we look forward, we look into 2030, we look into 2050, uh, we look at demographics, uh, composition, distribution of uh, population, and then we look at the increase in wealth, uh, which is a good thing, uh, we know that demand is uh, becoming uh, more and more steep for energy. Uh, around the world and will become more and more steep. And we know that endowments, uh, the question of capabilities, it's an issue that is 
fairly heterogeneous or the distribution of those uh, around the world. Uh, and then obviously we have um, uh, the issue of how do you then source that energy. Uh, so with that sort of situation, how do we provide access and availability of energy to everybody? And that's where trade comes into the, into the equation. Uh, this is why we need to look at trade policy today. So you have both a, a kind of a regulatory as well as a commercial element here, um, uh, which can, Laurence, uh, create an even more complex myriad of issues with which to deal. I think yes, because uh, as Ricardo said, it's not only a problem of really uh, the next 10 years, but it is a long-term problem. If we imagine that 80% of the economy of the industrial countries have to be, uh, uh, have to be rid of uh, fossil fuels uh, in now uh, 2050, that really half of our uh, emissions of carbon should be uh, diminished by, by a half in 2050, that's a very big transformation of the economies. You cannot have a transformation of economies uh, just like by the market itself. So it will require, it is requiring an enormous state intervention. Uh, subsidies for research, uh, procurement policies, and a, a vast array of policies. This is really, and I feel uh, already, um, sort of fostering potential protectionist policies. Uh, it is really get, having really a, a pressure on the countries that uh, have to really give access to a number of people who are really poor. And uh, again, we, we don't have the, the forum to discuss that. Um, many countries f feel that, for example, the enormous efforts of uh, China to invest in renewable energy is potentially a trade threat and they would like to be protected from it. So we, ha we are facing a problem where we need economy at scale of clean energy and at the same time a transformation in each economy. And we don't have the solution now. Uh, for this reason, I think uh, um, we, we know that we cannot have an agreement to, to deal with that. But we need really to understand how different energy policies with the same uh, objectives, the long-term objective, can be compatible, can be coordinated, and can be, in a way, uh, transformed into a collect not a, co a collective policy, but something that can be not conflictive. And I think that's really key. If not, I think the market can be closed, everybody rushing to do its own renewable energy policy, and uh, with finally uh, people would be uh, left out of the system because they would be too poor to invest and too poor to get access to very high price fossil fuels that would be left. So for this reason, the equity issue, as well as the modernization and new technology issue are so linked. So we need new rules, new fora to deal with this problem? Uh, yes, I think that, um, that the two questions, the commercial questions and the rules question are linked. So uh, the reality that we're living through is simply that uh, we have very cheap fossil fuels. And uh, so we have oil that we know is um, still there for the next 50 years or so, coal for the next 180 years. And we have to compete uh, with very expensive technologies, wind, photovoltaic, and other forms of renewable energy that are clean, uh, that are much, much more expen expensive. So when governments try to address this problem, they would need uh, to use all sorts of policy tools. And they would actually try to meet uh, different policy uh, challenges. Uh, so they would try to create jobs, manufacturing capacity, develop technologies, and at the same time address climate change and energy security, all in a package of policies. Now when you do this in an environment of globalization, uh, you then find out that uh, you need rules uh, so that the game is uh, level, the playing field, and, uh, and so that again the competitiveness um, questions that are in, in, involved in the design of these policies uh, would not, again, affect those that are disadvantaged um, from the start. So, so yes, you need rules um, in order to generate the markets and respond to the commercial uh, questions. Laurence, your final thoughts? <coughs> I think the two communities, the community of the energy policies, the energy world, and the community of trade are not discussing uh, with each other. They are separated. And we have a discussion 
on energy which is really not connected with the trade. And that will conflict at one stage. So I think that really joining the two communities uh, to, to really get forward in, in a number of other maybe f more formal multilateral uh, areas and, and for us. Ricardo, you have the last word. So energy is both a competitive factor in many sectors of the economy, even if not in all. And it's at the same time, uh, the question of competi competitiveness uh, also affects energy markets and the markets for energy sources, uh, energy technologies, uh, goods and services, and so on. Um, you asked before if we need rules and new fora. I think that we have the frameworks in place, the WTO itself, uh, even though the rules may not have been written to deal with the energy question. Uh, the big uh, challenge, again, for governments, really, is to seize the opportunities that they have within the system. In the WTO, they have mandates uh, in the various committees that could deal with the, the policy tools that are being used to promote these uh, clean energies. Uh, they can also use the mandate of the Doha Brown, as you said, on environmental goods and services particularly. But if it's not possible to move these issues here in the WTO, then countries may need to choose to do it outside. And they also have the possibilities. We have uh, precedent on this. They could establish plurilateral agreements, perhaps following WTO principles and norms that could later on be joined under the WTO. But there is a need to urgently act on these questions. Ricardo Melendez-Ortiz, Laurence Tubiana, many thanks to you both, and thanks to you for watching WTO Forum.